Hi, uh, today we're going to be taking a photo. So, I know what you're asking yourself. Jackson, what are you, what are you shooting? How, what, what, uh, what's going on? So, I'm going to be talking about how I've planned out this photo, how I went about taking the photo, the steps that have gone to ensuring that I'll have the equipment to take the photo. I'm going to go through all that jazz. And hopefully this will be able to communicate for me and for my audience um, how you might be able to plan your photos better, even if it's just some tiny little shoot you're doing in your backyard to some photo that you've spent like two months planning and waiting on the perfect conditions. For example, this photo, I've waited very long for these conditions to kind of line up to get the shot I'm desiring. This is, this is what I'm talking about. So the location for today is a place in Brisbane called Chorncliffe Pier. A lot of people use it for fishing. A lot of people use the pier for photos, but we're not going to the actual pier. We're just going off from it. So if you can see on the tablet here, there is uh, the old Shawncliffe Pier, which has all these really nice pylons sticking out of the ground. And I want to get into the water, uh, set up the telephoto lens with an ND filter, point it out toward the sunset, hopefully with clouds, it's meant to be cloudy today, and capture like a maybe one minute long exposure. Um, so the water looks super crystal clear and it's the sun setting from behind us. So the pylon should be lit up quite nicely. That's the plan anyway, but let me show you how I found all this information out. It was through this awesome app called Pillphoto. I use this app for a number of things. You can check the sun and see all the details when golden hour is gonna be, of how long it's going to be, what date it is and where the position of the sun's gonna be. You can do the same with the moon if you wanna get shots of the moon or find out when there's gonna be a new moon or a full moon yeah, for taking those types of photos. Exposure numbers, it can tell you approximately what will get you an even exposure, but that depends on the type of camera, depth of field, the math of how far away you need to be from something. So this makes it really, really, really easy to find out a lot of information that could take you a long time to learn, but you can just learn it off the bat. But today we're gonna to go into the planner. So you can put in your location here, which I have as Sean Cliff Pier, and you can off the bat at the top, it shows you all your information, like where the sun's going to be, the height, the sun, where it's rising, when golden hour, or blue hour is going to be, um, and even where the Milky Way galaxy is going to be in relation from where your camera is going to be pointing. So the details we're looking at here, you can set your pin location to be where you want to be. And I figure I'm gonna be walking off the end of the pier here. So I'm gonna plot myself down there. And the time, I know I want it to be at sunset on today, which is a Tuesday. So I'm gonna put it around that golden hour of kind of five to four-ish. So where this uh, orange line is going, that's where the sun's actually gonna be setting. So if we line it up to there, the sun's gonna be behind us. So all these little pylons um, in the middle just here, they're gonna be all lit up. And if I want to do it sunrise, um, alternatively, the next morning, you can see the sun rises from the other side. And this can be perfect for making sure that your subjects are lined up in the background, if you're gonna have your sun there, if you need something notable. And obviously the sun rotates around at different parts of the year. So it's, this is just the most amazing app for any kind of beginning photographer. It is $10, but unlike all these other stupid apps, it's not a subscription fee. It's a one-time payment of $10, and you have access to all this information forever. And it's probably the most useful bit of kit for my photography that I've ever bought, um, apart from the camera, of course. So the only not downside, it won't tell you what the tides are. So today was a day where I had to look for where it's gonna be partly cloudy weather, um, a little bit windy, which is what we have outside at the moment, um, which is exactly what I needed, but I needed the low tide to line up because I wanna get the water lapping on the rocks. Can't do that high tide, so I'm probably gonna have to put on like a wetsuit and waddle out into probably a meter deep water with the tripod. We'll see what happens, but that's the plan at the moment anyway. And the conditions look great. I was gonna do it yesterday, but there were no clouds. There's clouds today and it's windy. So hopefully there should be a beautiful um, backlit sunset to go along with this exposure. I think this is gonna be a very nice photo. The only other photo that I've done this much planning for is uh, this photo. Um, that one is five different images all lay it on into one, each image being at about a 40 second exposure to get those really nice fluid waters. And that one took a lot of planning. And that's what I'm doing for this photo as well. Um, I don't know. <laughs> the reason I want to take this photo, it's because everyone who goes to Sean Cliff Pier takes photos of the pier. So when you think, like, oh yeah, got some, got some photos of Sean Cliff Pier. But this is gonna be a photo of the original Sean Cliff Pier. 
the old one, the OG, man. And I think that's a lot more interesting because I want to try and do something that not a lot of other people have done. And I'm semi-certain most photographers won't be wading out into the water uh, close to dark to try and get this photo. So I'm challenging myself in that sense, where instead of just doing something everyone else has done, I'm trying to do something similar, but you know, just, uh, just, uh, just that little bit further. So that's my message for everyone today. Try and challenge yourself. Even if it's doing something someone else has done, just try and do it a little bit differently because you don't want to be seen as a copycat. Um, there's nothing wrong with being a copycat. There's some quote somewhere that's like, good artists create the best artists steal. So that's what I'm doing. I'm stealing the idea of taking <laughs> photos at Sean Cliff Pier at sunset, which everybody has done, but I'm doing it on a subject that's a little bit different. Um, I might enter this into a photo competition about Brisbane and Brisbane's history. That might be pretty interesting. This shot's gone on for too long, so next time you see me, we're going to be in the car, traveling. Hopefully. Whoa! There we go. I lied. I wasn't in the car. We're actually here now. So, that's over there. That's the pier. And the pylons are right over there. So, that's what we're going to be aiming for. So, this is what I was talking about, the ND filters. They're basically filtering from the sun. So if I put this over here, it goes very dark very quickly. And so that's just so you can have a longer exposure of the images. So I'm gonna set up the camera, chuck these ND filters on, and walk out and hopefully capture something. <laughs> so I got the bad boy set up, pointed down there. It's on a 30 second long exposure at the moment and we've got the water. If I don't really like how this one turns out, I'll either adjust or dim the brightness, and then I'm probably gonna invert the tripod and put it upside down. So we'll see how all that goes. Um, but the water is getting pretty close, so we'll see. So 30 seconds wasn't long enough, so we're gonna up the exposure time to probably a minute. We'll see what double the exposure does for it, and uh, yeah, we'll see. We've switched out to the old reliable 27. Tough, 70. 24 to 70. It's a little bit shorter now, so hopefully we should be able to get some more radical wide shots. So the interesting thing about shooting um, when you stop down right to like 22, you have to try not to move on the ground much, because a little bit shaking the footsteps can actually vibrate the tripod and mess up the shot and then it won't be as sharp. So at the moment we are at, is that 30 something seconds? I think we'll push this one for about a minute as we haven't got really much sunlight back left. I know it looks like there's a lot of sun, there really isn't. Um, so we shall see how this one turns out. So I'm currently shielding the camera from the wind. Again, I don't want to shake. Ooh, that's nice. That's, you can't see it, but that's nice. It's very cold. Now it is dark. Can't really see much of anything, but I feel it was a success. Time to check out the photos. <laughs> I'm freezing. My little feet have been in the water. 